to our first lecture and also our introduction. And uh, my name is Professor Phil Shapps. And a little bit about me. I was the Executive Director of Marketing for Universal Pictures for over 23 years. And I worked on 400 movies, including E.T., Back to the Future, Jurassic Park, The Grinch, and there's List, um, and a ton of others. So I've also been a Director of Marketing, United States, Europe, Middle East, and Asia. And I understand uh, international business quite well. And uh, we'll go through some of the this week's work, what's necessary, and I think I'll kind of break it down and show you exactly what uh, is required. And I, I think the best way to handle any of these assignments in this class is to uh, just break it down into little pieces. We call that chunking. So let's, you know, for an example, if you are doing a discussion and there are five sentences, take each sentence and break it down into individual sentences. So you read the first one, stop, and then you go down to the next one and read it and stop and highlight it or make little notes. Uh, it, I will... Um, get an announcement out on chunking a little later this week, hopefully, oh, well, actually next week. And um, I hope that we're going to have a lot of fun in this class. I normally teach graduate marketing and management. Uh, I am really excited about working in the undergraduate group. Uh, I'm quite familiar having worked at many universities for the last 10 years doing undergrad and grad uh, marketing and business management. As I said, I have an MBA, which is a Master's of Business Administration. Now, walking through this class, as I do your assignments and grade, I have a companion who usually is, yes, he's right there, he's completely under my chair, and his name is Elton, and Elton is a medium golden doodle, and he is almost three years old, and he's my buddy, and he's with me all day long. And uh, since I no longer, I just do um, online work, um, he's here, and we go out for walks, and we have a great time. So let's try a little bit of an experiment. If you're watching on your computer, we're going to try a little magic trick, and let's see if you can follow along. Part of being in a college class is to listen to your instructions. So if you have difficulty with this particular experiment that I'm gonna do, you have to slow it down a little bit and look at things much more clearly, concisely, and you know what, ask questions. Let's do it. Let's try an online magic trick. Are you ready? Take your finger and place it on any one of the circles that you see on your screen. You want to change it? Go ahead. If you're going to change it, change it now. But now, hold your finger wherever it is and listen carefully to what I tell you. You should be on any one of the circles that you see on your screen. All right. Now move your finger left or right to the nearest diamond. I'll wait a second for you. You got it there? Okay. Now I want you to move your finger up or down to the nearest circle. Okay, did you do that? Great. Now listen very carefully. I want you to move your finger diagonally to the nearest diamond. Okay, good. All right, and finally, move your finger left or right to the nearest circle and I should have no idea where it arrived. All right, so if you are on that red circle, then you have good listening skills. If you didn't, you should watch this video uh, in the class and figure out where you went wrong. But listening 
and understanding are really good things. We'll go over lots of good stuff tonight. All right, so this is international business and it, incur, it, it uh, occurs in many different formats. The movement of goods from country to another, that's exporting, importing, trade. I'm sure you hear that in the news all the time. Contractual agreements that follow, that allow foreign firms to use product services and processes from other nations, that's licensing and franchising. If you go to Europe, you'll see Starbucks and McDonald's and Colonel Sanders. The formation and operations of sales, manufacturing, research and development, and distribution facilities in foreign markets. So what's different about international business? International business encompasses all commercial activities that take place to promote the transfer of goods, services, resources, people, ideas, and technologies across national boundaries. So when we talk national, we, um, the United States would be considered domestic and Mexico and Canada would be considered international, all of Europe, all of China, Russia, and all other situations, all other countries. So international has a smaller scope encompassing only uh, two or more countries or global has a much larger scope, which includes the whole world. Sometimes they're used in lieu of each other. So sometimes you'll say global, and it means also uh, worldwide, while international means foreign or multi-national. Uh, uh, now, I like the word global because to me, I think of a globe, a big globe, okay? And on that globe are all the different countries. And so that's how I look at global. I don't have any problem if you substitute global for international or vice versa. But international and global to me are pretty much the same. Uh, and, and, you know, I, you'll have to, uh, you know, use the word that you like the best. So this is what we've been doing this week. Uh, select a country on which to base your trade attache course project. Uh, identify key information about the selected, co selected country. You're going to develop a mind map that summarizes the key differences between international and domestic business. And the assignment is international and domestic business mind map. Now, remember I just told you before, international, global, is everything outside of the United States. Domestic is happening within the United States, okay? So we will uh, make sure you understand the difference between domestic and international. I'm gonna go over it again. International is global, is the world, but not including the United States. Domestic would be the United States. Now, let's take this one other place. If you lived in France, France would be your domestic and the United States would be international. It's that simple. All right, so you have three things to read this week. Advising clients on their global expansion initiatives, difference between domestic and international, which you should know, and differences between domestic and international business again. Well, somebody has, uh, I guess I didn't catch that. So I don't know, I hope they're the uh, different articles. Let's hope. Just read those and, and you don't have to read everything, scan it and look for key words. So by day two, you're gonna visit this discussion board, which you should have done. I think you've done it already. You chose a country from the list, uh, no two people can select the same country. And you're gonna to reply to the country selection discussion board with the name of the country in the subject box. And then obviously I have approved it, so we don't really need to go into that. All these great countries. Now, let's see all the countries that I have been to. I've been to the Netherlands. I have been to Austria, I have been to France, 
I have been to Spain. I've been to Sweden. I've been to Portugal. I have been to the United Kingdom. I've been to Greece. I just came back from Morocco. And that's it. I love Morocco, maybe. It's a tough country. It's a third world country. It's boy, oh boy, oh boy. But I did ride camels in the Sahara Desert. Very, very cool. All right, so by today, you're going to research the required information and then post your introduction as a reply to your initial thread. So you've got your country. Now you're going to, uh, you're going to give us the geographical location and size of the country, the population, life expectancy, and age distribution, literacy levels, and unemployment rate. Now. You're thinking, how do I get this information? Easy, 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 breezy. You say your country's Morocco. You put in, you Google um, the geographical location and size of Morocco, the population size, life expect expectancy, and age distribution of Morocco and literacy levels and unemployment rate of Morocco. Then the ISO code for the country, Morocco. The national currency and currency code, Morocco. It's the dirham and it's like uh, 10 dirham per dollar. And then the usual greeting in your selected country. So Spain, hola. Um, I don't remember any of the other ones. <laughs> Arbiter Zain, um, Israel, Shalom. Uh, <laughs> I can't even remember the countries. So the usual greeting in your selected country, okay? Very easy stuff. So here's what the funniest thing, I love this. What do you mean all my facts are wrong? I copied everything straight off the internet. Well, make sure your facts are correct, and sometimes you have to double check them. Make sure you get, get good sources. And what I just told you about Googling stuff, you know, what is the size of the country of Morocco? I mean, you're gonna have all kinds of really good resources. Nobody's gonna put in there some you know, ridiculous answer. So I, I, I just want you to be cognizant of the fact that, you know, you make sure your sources are good sources. Okay, when you've completed your research, create a discussion post. Begin with the usual greeting in the language of your selected country, citing the information source for the greeting, okay? So um, maybe you went on to Wikipedia or the internet and just you're going to do your source. Now, the hardest thing in this entire class is probably APA format. So what you want to do is you want to Google or go to YouTube and look at what APA format is for your source. Then you're going to include a short paragraph about the facts you research from the CIA World Factbook and Nations Online, citing the information appropriately in APA. Now, what do we mean by citing? Okay, any observation that you use in this class or any other class needs to have um, a source. And what happens is that you tell me where you got the information. If you don't have a source, it means that you, with your incredible skills through you know, education, that you already know everything. So you, know, you don't need a source. Or that if you do put stuff down that doesn't have a source, we could consider that a form of plagiarism. And that's not good, which basically means that you're putting information that you got somewhere else as your own. Um, so be careful. Uh, no responses to classmates are required for this discussion board posting. That's even better. All right. 
So here's places where you can get information. The DU library has a guide dedicated to AP resources, APA resources. The DU library offers free web-based Noodle Tools software, which include a wizard for compiling references, pages, and so forth. And you begin your references uh, page for your course project now and list the sites from the assignment as you will be able to include the research information in your project. So what do you do? Open up a Word file. Start putting in your resources. Put in week one and then your resources. Week two and then your resources. Then by the end of the class, you gotta, you don't have to run back and find everything. Do it one step at a time, okay? Really. It's really, really, really easy. Okay, how am I gonna grade you? Well, the grading criteria is based on, um, you've included everything that was required, you've included most everything, and zero, 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 much of the required content is missing. You don't wanna do that, okay? You know, you really wanna try for the best. Don't wait to the last minute to do this stuff, really. I mean, it's just do it, get it over with, and then you can, like, you know, not have to worry about it. Writing. Make sure you check your grammar and spelling. You know, there's a ton, a ton of free grammar and spelling checkers. There's one called, oh, I, I'll have to get it out there. And then an APA, error free in text, citations, list, and references. That's usually where everybody kind of falls down because they think they don't have to put in text citations. We do, we do, we do. You're in college. Okay. International and domestic business mind map. That's where you are right now. Now, we've already talked about international and we've talked about domestic. International is everything outside of the United States. Domestic is business within the United States. So your weekly learning objective is develop a mind map that summarizes the key differences between international and domestic business. I immediately know what you're thinking. A mind map, what the heck is that? Well, we're gonna go over it step by step and I'm gonna show you that it's not that complicated. The first thing, though, you need to do is collect information. So once you have all of that information, you know, on a, on a Word file or something, you can then bring it over into your, your mind mapping um, sort of illustration. Uh, and, you know, uh, once again, we will go over, I'll show you how to do all of this. So. Uh, you will complete two mind maps, uh, and you'll to prepare these assignments, please read what is mind mapping. We'll go over it tonight. You can complete your mind maps for the two assignments by hand, or use the free online mind mapping software suggested below. Okay, it's in your class. I would use the software. Honestly, it's really going to help. The software is typical, very quick, and easy to learn. I looked at it. Let me tell you, it's, it's a breeze, easy breeze. However, you will be responsible for learning how to use it yourself, and the DU tech support folks will be unable to assist you if you run into problems. If you get the name of the software and you need tech support, go on to YouTube and you'll find all kinds of YouTube uh, videos that'll help you with it. Look, you gotta, uh, you know, you got to do the work and uh, you'll get through it. Okay, so what is mind mapping and how to get started immediately? This is a mind map, okay? A mind map is a graphical way to represent ideas and concepts. It is a visual thinking tool that helps structuring information, helping you to better analyze, comprehend, synthesize, recall, and generate new ideas. Just as in every great idea, its power lies in its simplicity. And, and really, that's what it is. Okay, so the fact of the matter is, is that keep it simple. 
That's the keep it simple program, okay? Uh, which is my program, which means absolutely nothing. A mind map, as opposed to a traditional note-taking or a linear text information, is structured in a way that resembles much more closely how your brain actually works. So we look at images, and that's how we know how to do it. You look at your hand, we know it's a hand, because our brain has associated our hand with this. So if you're doing a country, uh, and you have all of these different elements, then you you put your country in the middle and then have all the elements like coming out of it. Now, you're going to be doing one domestic and international, so you're going to actually have to, you could, well, I'm not going to show you how to do it, but you're going to have to use some creativity to show both. It is an activity that is both analytic, meaning you analyze it, you look at it deeply, and artistic. If you're not artistic, that's why it's good to use the program. It engages your brain in as much, much richer way, helping in all its cognitive functions. And best of all, it's fun. Cognitive functions? What do we mean by cognitive functions? Cognitive functions are the mental process that allow us to receive, select, store, transform, develop, and recover information that we receive from external stimuli. So this process allows us to understand and to relate to the world more effectively, okay? The process allows us to understand and to relate to the world more effectively. That's what cognitive functions are. Hey, you know, here's a cool thing to do. Uh, if you're like in a conversation with somebody and say, you know, my cognitive functions are working. How cool is that? So, uh, as opposed to cognitive dissonance, but I won't confuse you. So how does a mind map look like? Better than explaining is showing you an example. These are all little examples, but I'll show you the one that uh, is in your class. So there you go. There's your mind map. And you have all of these different symbols and things that, you know, reflect all of the information that you have uh, come up with. We're going to show a quick video at the end of this, so don't freak out yet. So this is a mind map about convenient, uh, that uh, about, Conveniently enough, mind mapping itself, okay? It presents in a visual way the core elements and techniques on how to draw mind maps. Once you break the ingrained habit of linear note-taking, that's like writing out long sentences, you don't look back. Let's go back and take a look at that. Um, so this is a mind map. Look at the middle, there's a mind, and there are words and images and colors and structures and paper and lines. Okay, now, in a minute, I'm gonna show you where all of that comes from. Remember, this is about mind mapping. I'm gonna show you exactly how this is done. Remember those, color, images, words, lines, paper, and in the middle are maps. So this is based on mind mapping. Okay, so benefits and uses. Mind mapping avoids dull linear, which is just like what we read a book, jogging your creativity and making note taking fun again. Okay, so we're now going to have some fun by drawing. Okay, mind maps can be used for note taking, brainstorming, okay. Um, individual or in groups, problem solving, studying and memorization, planning, research, and cons consolidating information from multiple sources, and researching, presenting, gaining insight, and jogging your creativity. So, how do you jog your creativity? Say your instructor is talking about about a boat in the ocean, okay? So if you were doing a mind map, what image would you use? 
Go ahead, tell me, what image would you use if you were using a mind map? Can you tell me, what would you use an ocean? Would you use a boat? Okay. Just type it in the, in the thing. A boat, absolutely. Okay, let's try another one. Let's try another one, because this is really good. Uh, I'm gonna give you a sentence, and um, you know, I was driving to the market. Okay, using a mind map, what images do you see? Give me one word. Driving to the market. Maybe a car. Yeah. And some groceries. Or uh, uh, how about a little building that says market? Okay. So far, let's try one more. I'm going to fly to Morocco. Plane. That's it. And then on the other side, you put the word Morocco. Very cool. Let's watch the video on a mind mapping. So how do we draw a mind map? Start in the middle of a page, a blank page, writing or drawing the idea you intend to develop. I suggest that you use the page in a landscape orientation, that's the long way, 
and develop the related subtopics around this central topic, connecting each of them to the center with a line, and then repeat the same process for the subtopics, generating lower level subtopics, that's little branches, as you see fit, connecting each of those to the corresponding subtopic. Let me show you what I did. Okay, so this is my mind map for myself. And you could see up here is my best friend Les up in the right. I love to travel. I went to college. I got an MBA and I became an instructor. Um, I have a great daughter. I've been teaching online for nine years and I had 23 years at Universal Pictures. And in the middle is me. That's my mind map. So some recommendations, use colors, drawings, and symbols copiously. Keep the topic uh, labels as short as possible, keeping them to a single word or better yet, to only a picture, and vary text size, color, and alignment. Mind mapping is an absolutely fascinating and rich topic. The, this post only scratches the surface. So if you want more information, more reference material, go to Wikipedia. Also, you can go online to Google, and you can also go to YouTube. It's always a good place to start. I want to thank you so much for sitting through my first lecture. And if you have any questions, please contact me through course messages. I wish you a wonderful week, and thank you for being in this class.